All right, the second positioning property that we wanna take a look at is absolute. Now, this guy's pretty cool. Absolute positioned elements are pulled out of this normal page flow, this normal flow of content. Again, think of like a stream or a river. So we're gonna pull the element, in this case, it's gonna be a div, out of the normal page flow. And the element itself, once again, whatever that element might be, in our case, I'm using divs, that element is gonna be positioned relative to what's referred to as the parent container. Now, what the heck am I talking about? Once again, it's all about boxes inside boxes or containers inside containers. Let's imagine that I have a div inside another div and I'm messing around with the positioning on the innermost div. Well, the parent container for that inner div is gonna be the outer div. Or here's another quick example. If I have a paragraph inside a table cell, well, the parent element to the paragraph is gonna be the TD, the table data or the table cell, right? So the parent element is always the next container up in the structural hierarchy. So once again, the element, when we're messing around with absolute positioning, the element is gonna be positioned relative to its parent container. If there is no parent container, then what's gonna happen is the element is gonna be positioned based off of the browser window itself. Or the way that I think of it is it's gonna be positioned off of the body element because that's the outermost parental container, if you will, for our entire page, okay? Now this might not be making a whole lot of sense, but we'll actually get into pulling this off here. The only other thing that I wanna mention here is that once again, we can make use of top, right, bottom, and left to further position or more precisely position our element. So let's go and check this out. I'm gonna take my blue div now and I'm going to change his positioning. So I'm gonna flip into my code and I'm gonna go and look for my blue div. There he is there, the background blue. And I'm gonna go and throw in a new property here, position of course, and I'm gonna say absolute, okay? Followed by a semicolon. Throw in a space and let's see, I'm gonna throw in a top value of 20 pixels, just like this. And I'm gonna throw in a left value as well of 20 pixels. Now you can use whatever values you want. I'm just throwing 20 pixels in here just to see the result, to see what we're gonna get here. So go ahead and save your code and go back to your browser and refresh and voila, check out what just happened. Now you might be kind of confused by what just happened. It is actually kind of confusing if this is your first go at it. Let me ask you this, the parent container for the blue div, what is the parent container for the blue div? Does the blue div reside inside another HTML element? If I look at my code here, does it reside inside the paragraph? No, because the paragraph closes, doesn't it? Does it reside inside a heading one or a heading two? No, because I can see closing tags there. It resides inside the body. So in other words, what this means is that the blue div, the blue rectangle, is being positioned, in my example, based off of or relative to the top left corner of my browser window. So what I've said is I've told this blue div to be positioned 20 pixels down and 20 pixels over from the left-hand side. So in other words, if you're familiar with what X and Y coordinates are, if you come from maybe a print background, or maybe you use Illustrator or Photoshop a lot, and you're constantly setting horizontal and vertical positioning values for your different objects, maybe you're wireframing or something like that. It's exactly the same concept, except here in CSS, we don't call it X and Y, we call it top and left, but it's exactly the same concept. It's exactly the same principle. So I could come back to my code here and I could throw in whatever value I want. Maybe I wanna push this guy down 100 pixels from the top, and I wanna push him in from the left-hand side, 100 pixels. Again, whatever the layout, whatever the page calls for. Refresh, and the object simply repositions itself. 100 pixels down and 100 pixels over, okay? So I hope that's working for you. Now, what about the other divs? They're just still kind of hanging out there. And now we have this overlapping effect. Well, why do we get this overlapping effect? Because this blue div is no longer in my river of content. It's no longer in the flow or the stream of page content. It now resides outside of the stream. So imagine a big rock sitting in the middle of my river. The rock does not flow with the water anymore. It sits right in the middle of the river 
and all of the content flows around the rock. That's my cheesy metaphor to hopefully convey this concept for you. So this blue object here and any content that resides inside this blue object now resides outside of the normal page flow. Now, let me show you something else that's pretty cool here. I'm going to flip back over to my code and I'm going to, of course, go and look for my blue div. And of course, we've seen the absolute positioning we've seen using top and left. But as a matter of fact, I can actually use different properties rather than using top and left. Maybe I want to use bottom and right. So maybe I want to change the way that my object is appearing on screen. So here's a quick example. Instead of setting this guy based off of the left edge of the browser window, in my case, I'm going to say, no, no, I want to position this guy based off of the right hand side of the browser window. And maybe I'll wind up going with something like, say, 50 pixels. So I want this object to push in from the right hand side 50 pixels into the center of the page. Save up my code, back over to my browser, and refresh. And now the object appears way over on the right hand side of my screen. So what I've told this object to do is position itself 100 pixels down from the top and 50 pixels in from the right hand side. I hope that's making sense for you. Now, you might want to go back to your code and experiment a little bit, but of course, there's much more that I want to show you.